Hi, welcome to RV Healthy. I'm Andy McCaskey from RVNN TV, but the, the real host, the star of the show, is Sylvia Tanozer from RV Healthy. Sylvia, how are you doing today? I'm good, Andy. How are you? Oh, you know, uh, I love to talk about hungry because I get the hungries all the time. Uh, but I think the whole point of this show is that I might not actually be hungry. And so maybe you can explain that. Well, a lot of times people think they're hungry and they're grasping at some of the food, but that's my question to you is, are you really hungry? So what we're going to talk about is our hunger signals. And primarily when you're asking yourself or you're getting ready to go eat something, you know, you may want to ask yourself, am I truly hungry? Is my stomach growling? Am I getting a headache? All those things that you may normally get or have when you're truly, in fact, hungry. Mm -hmm. Or am I an emotional eater? Okay, now this is a, it's an interesting phrase when you talk about emotional uh, eating because if, from a man's point of view, I look at that and I think emotional. Oh, okay, somebody's really stressed out or they're really upset. And that, uh, you know, if it doesn't drive them to drink, it'll drive them to food. But some of the emotions maybe aren't quite that dramatic. They're not. In fact, emotions are so widespread. Many of us will eat for boredom. We can eat because we're celebrating, you know, cocktail hour or just out with friends, uh, celebrating for a birthday. You know, uh, there's so many reasons that we eat here in America that we need to kind of step back especially if you're trying to lose weight or get healthy, you want to make sure that you're eating for true hunger. You've so got, my question you've got three really reasons. is... I'm sorry, or, go ahead. I, go ahead. Uh, I, I think that was a little bit earlier we were talking about the fact that you've got three questions that can kind of help you sort this out pretty quickly. That's right. First and foremost is when you're hungry or you're grabbing after that food, how long has it been since you've had that meal? And if it's been, you know, three, four, five hours, then you know you're probably truly, in fact, physically hungry. And if that's the case, then you need to make sure that you're eating those good, healthy meals. But then secondly, you can ask yourself, am I going for those um, trigger foods, if you will? Some of us like salty foods as our trigger foods. Some of us like the sweet foods as our trigger food. I'm a sweet tooth through and through. The salty does nothing for me. So if I'm going for something sweet, I need to ask myself, am I going because I'm hungry or am I going because I've got some sort of an emotion that I'm trying to um, feed that emotion with? Know your body's hunger signals. Know when it's time to eat. If you, many of us like to eat at every, say, three hours and make it smaller meals throughout the day as opposed to every four to five hours and larger meals. And so I'm real good about watching my hunger signals, knowing when I'm just getting to that point where I'm going to start getting hungry. And I make sure that I'm eating something healthy because if you get to that famished mode, that starvation mode, you're going to make some poor choices as well. You're going to grab whatever's, uh, whatever's in the fridge or whatever, whatever you see. I'm curious exactly. about this, uh, the growling stomach, because uh, your stomach really kind of has to be empty in order to make that sound, huh? Not necessarily, because, you know, there can be a time that I, I may have eaten two and a half or three hours ago, and I just feel that tiny little rumbling in my stomach. I'm not waiting until I'm famished. I just feel that tiny little rumbling in my stomach, and I know, you know what? It has been a few hours since I've eaten, so I better go ahead and make myself something to eat, whether it be a snack or a meal, depending on, you know, what I had had first. My normal day is a meal in the morning, a snack mid-morning, a meal in the afternoon, a snack mid-afternoon, and then a meal in the evening, and then a snack late evening. Yeah. So I'm six times a day. <laughs> exactly. And, and I think one of the other things that's kind of interesting we've talked about is that your stomach is going to kind of send you a signal. Uh, if it's one type of eating and the signal's not going to be there, uh, if it's the different type of eating, maybe you could explain that. Okay, so if you are going for some food and it's the trigger food, you know it's either your sweet food or your salty food, and some of us are both, and you're going to that food, but yet your stomach's not hungry, your stomach's really not giving that empty feeling or slightly empty feeling, then you have to ask yourself, what is causing that trigger food to be a need? 
And many times we can, we can address these things because we know the triggers. We know the emotions that cause us to fall to those foods. For me, boredom will do it in a heartbeat. I can easily grab any kind of sweet cookies, ice cream, or anything, cake, pies, or whatever. If it was in my house, it's not in my house. I would go to those foods with boredom. So if you're the type of person that eats out of boredom, you need to know that and be prepared for that. So I have grapes on my counter. I just put them in the refrigerator. I'd show you to them because I know me. If I'm walking by into the kitchen to do laundry or whatever the case may be, I have grapes there so I can snack on those throughout the day. What about the feeling that you're full, that, that, that you're satisfied by, by what it is that you eat? Is that a tip off as far as uh, whether emotional eating is involved? It is. So if you are eating a meal and at the end of your meal you're satisfied, and that's a whole other topic where I can tell you you don't want to eat till you're full, you just want to eat till you're satisfied, so you watch your portions. But if you're satisfied and you're truly satisfied at the end of that meal, then you've eaten because of hunger. If you're not satisfied and you keep grasping at everything that you possibly can, whether it be the sweet or salty trigger food that you have, and you're still not satisfied, you're trying to feed that emotion and you won't get it satisfied until the emotion is fixed. Right. And so that explains, I guess, uh, some couch potatoes sorts of activities that even though you're there and you're watching TV, you're really kind of bored. And so that uh, is, is a trigger then. Right. And that's a topic we could have brought, probably brought up in our habit uh, series because if you know that you eat in front of a TV and that's your habit and you eat because the TV is on, you need to make sure that you address that habit and change that habit or you're eating because you're bored. I know for me, I can't get bored. I don't have a lot of times to get bored, but if I'm bored, I will eat. Okay, so you could be stressed. You could be sad. I mean, there's a number of other uh, uh, emotions that could uh, creep in here. What's, uh, what's your quick recommendation for each of those uh, situations? Well, for me, I know I, I do get bored in front of a TV. So I loved, I picked up crocheting again. I just taught my, with YouTube, you can teach yourself just about anything. So I picked up crocheting. And I remember I am one that likes to eat um, heavier comfort foods when it's cold out. So I love the fact that I went back to crocheting because I'm usually crocheting a blanket because that's about all I know how to crochet. And it's laying on my lap. So I'm working with my hands so I'm not bored and, and eating food with my hands. The other thing is if, if you are stressed at work and you know stress triggers you to go to that food that is a weak food for you, then find a way that you can um, help with that stress mode. And that could be listening to music, taking a walk, running in place. You know, when you're sad or you're angry, pick up the phone. Actually, I say when you're angry, you could go run in a very small private area and just scream. But there's so many <laughs> things that you need to find to do other than the food. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's interesting, more and more people as they're, if they're watching television, they also have a laptop open, you know, they're kind of checking out eBay, Facebook, and so forth. So in some ways that can be, in this context, kind of a positive behavior because at least you're not reaching for the chips. That's right. As a matter of fact, I was telling somebody the other day, she said, you know, I love the fact that I now flip through commercials. And I said, you know, that's perfect because usually commercials are all food related. So, you know, the commer or a lot of them are. So if you're flipping, you know, you're TiVoing something or you're DVRing something and you're flipping through those commercials, that's great because you're not going to have those triggers that come in with the, the restaurants that you see on, on the uh, television, yeah. on the commercials. Well, exactly. And, and you know, it's uh, interesting to see how this ties back to some of our other uh, episodes, uh, particularly with respect to choices and to planning. So uh, if you could kind of summarize here, uh, detecting these emotional triggers and then planning. What, what, how would you incorporate your, your coaching or recommendation? Well, I think it's all, if you, if you really look at uh, trying to become healthy or trying to lose weight, because all, you know, most of us really want to be on this earth as long as possible. We want to see our children and our grandchildren and so forth grow up, and we want to be out there in our motorhomes or our recreational vehicles and just having a good old time. 
So all of these kind of work hand in hand, but the hunger, your hunger signals need to be something that you really learn your body and you need to learn how to stop at satisfaction and not overeat and don't do that clean the plate mentality and really know what triggers your desire for those foods that are going to and I mentioned this before on another episode that ice cream is a big weakness for me and I know what foods or what emotions will trigger my need for that ice cream so I have to really be prepared for that with some better alternatives this and a whole bunch of other useful tips are found at Sylvia's site at rvhealthy.com. I encourage you to check that out. Also, uh, from as far as Pinterest is concerned, don't forget that RV Healthy has a uh, board at the RVNN Pinterest board, if that uh, all, all makes sense. Uh, and there we have links to all sorts of interesting topics and recipes that uh, uh, Sylvia provides. Don't forget to uh, look for us on Facebook, and we appreciate it when you can give us the uh, thumbs up there uh, on Google+, Plus, also uh, on uh, Twitter. And when you're on Twitter, uh, please use the tag RVHL, the hash RVHL, because that's the way you can send a message directly uh, to Sylvia for questions and comments that we can include on future episodes. Uh, if you're watching us on the uh, Roku, uh, make sure that uh, you follow up with the uh, show notes. And the way you find show notes is to go to rvnn.tv. And on the drop down uh, shows menu, you can find RV Healthy and uh, some of the topics and links that we've uh, talked about in this and in other episodes. So, Sylvia, great show. Got a question? If, there's, if you were to summarize once again, uh, what's the one thing that you can do to control your emotional eating? Handle them. Handle them without food. Handle them without food. There's a positive way to reframe that and, uh, and to move forward towards your, weight lo towards your weight loss goals. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on RV Healthy. Hey Gabe, want to go for a walk? Gabe? 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 But are you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home. <laughs>